Hebrews chapter 4. We're going to read, uh, start in verse number 1. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 1, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, sure do love you. Lord, I pray that you'd bless now the service, Holy Spirit of God, as I prayed last night. God, I beg you that you'd be with us, Holy Spirit. You said where two or three are gathered in my name, that there you are in the midst. Lord Jesus, I love you very much. And Jesus, I know I deserve to be in hell. But thank you, Jesus, for loving me, giving me a home in heaven, forgiving me of my sin, and allowing me to preach the word of God. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that now you'd speak to the hearts of everybody here. May the message be a blessing. Lord, I know that not many of us is here, not like last week. Lord, we had a great day last week, and I knew, Lord, the devil would fight. But, Lord, we can still have another great service. But, Holy Spirit, you've got to show up. Holy Spirit, you've got to be here with us. You've got to make your presence known. I pray that you'd help each and every one of us to listen attentively, to give ear to the Word of God. May we listen, Lord, and learn something, God. May you speak to the hearts what you know that's needed. Holy Spirit, may it be your words and not mine. God, may you help me today to do the best that I can do. Lord God, I beg you. Oh God, we need your help. America needs to be changed. Wichita, Lord, needs to be changed. People need to be saved. Lives need to be changed. And it starts in the house of God. God, I beg you. Please do a work that only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. I had a different message prepared this morning. But last night I was praying and my wife was gone. And I was by myself. And the Holy Spirit changed my heart. And I want to preach to you a message today called So Close But Yet So Far. So close, but yet so far. This chapter caught my attention. Look there in verse number 1. It said, Let us therefore fear. Let us therefore fear. The fear in this chapter is not talking necessarily about a respect, but it is a fear in, in, a, in knowing that have a respect for God, but fear also as in be scared. Let us therefore fear. You need to realize fear. Why? Lest a promise being left us of entering into His rest. God left us a promise in today. God said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, that's a good promise. That's a promise of entering into His rest. His rest there in that verse is talking about heaven. Heaven is an eternal rest to the believer. Boy, it's going to be a blessing, amen, when you get to heaven. You don't, there's no more work. I love work. I love to work hard, but I'm looking forward to one day getting just to sit and learn at the feet of Jesus. No more having to get up at 5.30, 6 in the morning preparing for your day and having to worry and go to work and deal with the world and then come home. and do all. You get to enter into an eternal rest. No more do you got to fight against the devil. No more do you got to worry about all these problems in this day and age. We have an eternal rest waiting for us. Boy, I'm excited about that. But then look, why should we fear? Not because we have a rest. But look, it says, because any of you should seem to come short of it. God says you need to fear because there are some that won't enter into that rest. Is this saying that there are some that will, it may enter but can't because they fell short? No, God is saying there are some that will never be saved. Because look on verse 2, he says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So he said there's some that are going to fall short of that rest, and the same gospel that was preached to us was preached to them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So you see the difference. The difference is there are some that are going to enter into that rest, and there are some that will come short. Why did they come short? They had the word of God, but they didn't have faith. They had the church. They had the word of God preached to them. The gospel was given, but they didn't have faith. See, the difference between us 
One day when you get to enter into that rest is because the gospel was given to you and then it was mixed with faith. This is so true of many young people that are friends of mine that grew up in church. And they know they're not saved. You know why? They were in church their entire lives. And they heard the gospel preached. But they came short because they did not mix it with faith. They were so close, but yet so far. Let me tell you, it's the same with people in Wichita. We have the gospel. And for us as Christians, we're to go and give people the gospel. People right across the street, people right across the alley, people right behind us, they're so close to the gospel. But so far, why? They don't have faith. Part of that's our fault. We're not telling people the gospel. They can't believe in somebody they've not heard. They're so close, but yet so far. The children of Israel, this is a comparison to them as we read a little bit farther. The children of Israel, God took them and He had them wander through the wilderness. And they were going to get to the wilderness to the land of Canaan. Canaan was their rest, the Bible says. The land of Canaan was the land of promise. For the Christian, it's a picture of heaven. And they got right to the door of Canaan. They got right there. And God says they did not enter because of unbelief. Look there, verse 6. It says, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Boy, there's many that are right there at the door. There's many right there at the door of heaven. Many right here in Wichita that are right there at the door of heaven. They're so close. But God says because of their unbelief, they fell short. Well, I was burdened last night because I said, God forbid that people die and burn in hell. Because of, a pastor like, because of a pastor like myself, that I'm not filled with the Holy Spirit of God, that I don't allow God to use me to help people mix the gospel with faith. I'm so burdened because there's so many people. I got to see one saved yesterday evening. I was going and making a visit, and I met Evan. Evan was a funny guy. He was moving. He had this curly long hair. I mean, looked like this big old mop. I mean, it was just so thick. I was like, wow. Then he had this big beard, and I was talking to him, and I, and I gave him the gospel, and Evan got saved. And I said, buddy, I said, guess what? I said, you asked Jesus to come to your heart. I said, God just gave you eternal life. He goes, yes. <laughs> it was funny. I said, God just gave you eternal life. He goes, yes. He got a big old smile. Some people are so close. They're right there at the door. They're right across the street. They're right down the road. They're in the same zip code as we are, and they're so close, but yet so far. And I tell you today, we've got to be burdened about the gospel. We've got to be burdened. Because look there, verse 7, it says, Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Boy, the gospel needs to be given today. Boy, the gospel needs to be out there today. People need to trust Christ today. Today they need to know. Today they've got to trust Jesus. Why? Because hell's coming. Don't harden your hearts to the gospel. People in Wichita, listen to me. Don't harden your hearts. People that when we go soul winning to, I pray and, they, pray, pray and beg God they'd soften their hearts. Why? Because a day's coming where it won't be t there, there won't be a chance. It says today after so long a time. God's given people so long. God has given people time after time and chance after chance and moment after moment and time after time, but we neglect and we harden our hearts. And God says, you get so close, but then when you stand before God, you'll be so far. 
How did, we get, how did people get so close? Because the gospel's here. We have the gospel. We've got the word of God. Every, anybody can trust Jesus. Jesus said, I'll take anybody, amen. The gospel's here with us today. We have the word of God. Wichita, listen, the gospel's here. And everybody, we're so close. But what so far? Because we've not mingled it with faith. People are going to die and burn in hell because they're trusting their church. They're trusting their baptism. God says you just got to mix that gospel with faith. Boy, it burned my heart. Let's look there, verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. What makes the difference of salvation? What makes us fall? Unbelief. You can get all the way to the door. You can knock on the door of heaven. But if you don't believe, you'll never make it. Can I, can I beg you today? If you're not saved, trust Jesus. And for those of us that are saved, you know how many people would be saved if we would get off our lazy duffs and give the gospel? Boy, yesterday I wanted to go home and God pricked my heart and I got to see Evan saved. I almost just came home. I had already been out soul winning. I'd already been out invited people to church. I wanted to go home and God said, now nah, get out there. I went and made a visit and saw Evan. Evan got saved. His life was changed for eternity. But you know why? I get lazy in my spirit. And God told me, he said, you're a lazy preacher. You're a lazy man. Get out and give the gospel. Go home, don't go home and sit down around and do nothing for God. He said, get out there because some are so close, but they're so far they don't have faith. Many people would get saved if we would just give them the gospel. Boy, we need to labor. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Boy, it burned my heart. I was praying. I said, dear God, let it not be said that somebody died and went to hell in Wichita because we didn't do our part. Because don't let it be said that me as a lazy pastor didn't get out and give people the gospel. God reminded me last night of the urgency. God reminded me last night that there's not much time. God reminded me last, time, last night that there's a lot of things we do that really don't mean anything. But heaven's coming. Hell's coming. And for eternity, I'm going to look back and I'm going to say, Thank God I went back out Saturday. Thank God I told heaven about Jesus. Let me tell you, can you get burdened? But dear friend... Are you going to fall short? You're so close. You're in this room. You've been in church. You've heard the gospel. Why get so close? Why be like Judas and kiss the door of heaven? Why be so close and then just fall short? Please listen to me. It's not worth it. Look at verse 15 in chapter 3. It says, While it is today... If ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. While it's today, don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till the next day. Don't wait till the week after. Don't wait till next year. While it's today, the Bible says, today get saved. Amen. Don't wait. Don't harden your heart. Don't say, well, God, I don't know yet. Well, God, I've got questions. Just give it all up and believe and trust Jesus. Mingle it with faith today. Verse 16, for some when they had heard did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them that believed not, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Boy, they got so close! So close! God had to turn them away. He said, I'm sorry. You didn't have faith. Well, there's going to be a lot of people in heaven. Say, God, I was in church. Say, God, I got baptized. God, my, my daddy was a preacher. My daddy was a deacon. God's going to say, I'm sorry. 
You were that close. But you didn't mingle it with faith. Dear Christian, dear friend, let it not be said of us that we did not give the gospel, but dear friend, let it not be said that you sat service after service and didn't trust Jesus. Maybe you've been in church for a while and you know you've never put that faith in Jesus. You've heard the gospel. You have the gospel. You know it. It's been preached to you. But let it never be said that you went your whole life and never mingled it with faith. How many, there'll be enough, there'll be enough Baptists in hell to hold a revival meeting. You know why? No faith. No faith. God forbid. No faith. Are you falling short? Do you have that faith? Because let me tell you. Look there, verse 10. For he that in, is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and to the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There won't be an excuse one day. You know why? Because you have the Word of God. God promises, He says, the Word of God is quick and powerful. There's no way anybody can not have heard the Word of God and not have felt the Holy Spirit. When you stand before God, you'll never be able to say, Well, God, I didn't know. God's going to say, do you remember on May 15th when you were at church? You heard the word of God. He said, you have the gospel. You just didn't put faith. It's not God's fault. You won't be able to stand before God and say, well, God, it's your fault. God's going to say, no, you had the Bible. You had the word of God. It's also not an excuse for the Christian. God's going to look at us one day and say, who'd you bring with you? Did you reap in the harvest? Well, I, I, I couldn't. God says, you had my word. God says, you had the word of God. The word of God's all you need. This is what has the power. This is what has the authority. This is what will do it. God says, why didn't you use it? Dear Christian, have you used the word of God to tell somebody about Jesus this week? Can I ask you, have you used God's word and open it up and show the lost sinner said, hey, you know what? There's a heaven. There's a hell. God's going to look down and say, where, where is everybody? And us Christians are going to look at God and say, well, I, I was busy. God pricks our hearts during the week. You may walk by, have a moment, and God says, hey, go talk to that person. You think, well, God, I'm too busy. God, I, I can't. God says, hey, give a, give a track. God says, give a track to that guy. God may not always ask you to show them the gospel, but God says, give a track to him. Say, well, God, I, I can't. I'm, I'm scared. I'm nervous. God says, don't be. Give the gospel. You've got God's word. Amen. God's word's all you need. It has the power, the authority. When you give soul winning, when you tell people about Jesus... God's word all you need. Let me tell you, what a blessing. But then look there. Neither is there any creature, in verse 13, that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Lots of people are going to stand before God and say, Well, God, I didn't know. God says, No. There's nobody that's not manifest in His sight. God knows every moment of your life. God knows every moment that you have. And God knows every chance He tried to give you the gospel. God's going to be able to replay on a screen your life. And He's going to be able to say, right there, I spoke to your heart. You had the gospel. You just didn't mingle it with faith. We're going to be able to stand and say, well, be no excuse. Christian, it's the same for us. 
God's going to look at us one day and replay a screen in your life and say, you had a chance to give somebody the gospel. Your life is manifested before God. God knows every moment. Well, God, I was busy. God says there was a chance. I have family members that aren't saved. And I could have given them the gospel. And I haven't yet. God's telling me you have chances. Why don't we use them? You know why? It's our heart. Look there. Verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. One day there'll be no excuses because the sinners will be able to stand before God and God said, I sent you Jesus. Why didn't you believe? You had Jesus, the Son of God. The rich man in hell said, let, let, let somebody raise from the dead and tell my family. God says if they don't believe now, they'll never believe. Jesus came, He died, He's the Son of God. You say, well, I don't know about Jesus. God says, I sent Him. I gave Him to you. What more did you want? God gave you the greatest gift. What more could you ask for? But you know, for the Christian, stand before God. And you're going to have to look over on the right hand of God and you'll see your Savior. You imagine in your mind, I thought about this last night, I was praying. We're going to stand before God, knelt to give an account and you're going to look over and see the Savior of the world. And we didn't have time. Sinners are going to kneel before Jesus and say, Oh, I didn't have time to trust Him. Jesus took everything He had, put it aside, came to this world, and we can't trust Him. We won't trust Him. I know you did all that. I know you died for me, Jesus, but I just couldn't do it. And the Christians are going to stand before God. And one by one, people are going to be cast into hell. We're going to watch, and God says, you could have talked to them. Say, hey, but God, I, 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 was, I didn't have time. And then you're going to look at Jesus, and you're going to have to tell Jesus face to face, I, I, I didn't have time. Jesus said, I made time for you. Well, God, I, I, I was busy. Jesus said, I wasn't too busy for you. Boy, I prayed and I said, dear God, I don't want to be a pastor that I make excuses that I'm going to have to stand before Jesus and say, I'm sorry, Jesus, as a pastor, I didn't have time. Well, I don't want to have to say that. Because look, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Realize Jesus faced every problem you face, but without sin. So you'll not be able to stand before Jesus and say, well, you don't know how I feel. You don't know what I went through. The Bible says he was tempted in every point just like you. He faced every problem you've ever had. Jesus is just going to take, to take his hands and say, I know what you went through. You don't know what I went through. Dear Christian, do you love Jesus today? Do you love the Son of God? If so, look at that challenge at the end of verse 14. Let us hold fast our profession. Hold on to it. Don't let it go of Jesus. Don't let Jesus go. Hold on to what you believe. Hold on to the church. 
Hold on to God's word. Don't let the devil come and steal from you. But also give it to somebody else. Verse 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that, me, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You see, if you really want to, Jesus says you can come to the throne of grace and you can find grace to help if you really want it. You can get help. Dear sinner, you can get help today. Jesus says there's plenty of grace. You can have all the help that you need. Dear Christian, you have all the help you need. When you got saved, you were given a license to walk into the throne boldly. And kneel before Jesus and say, God, help me. God, forgive me and help me to be a better Christian. You have all the help you need. The only reason we don't grow, the only reason we don't love God, the only reason we don't win people to Jesus, why? We just don't care. Because we've got all the help. God will help you. Say, but I don't know how to do it. God will help you. I'm scared. God will help you. I don't know if people will listen. God will help you. But dear friend, the biggest thing in my mind was verse 4. Or, or, or uh, chapter 4, verse 1. Do you fear that people will fall short of heaven? Do you fear that? Let me ask you a question. Do you care? If people die and go to hell? Listen to me. Do you care if that person across the street from you burns in a devil's hell for eternity? If they spend eternity in a lake of fire and brimstone where the worm dieth not? Do you care if your family member burns in hell? Well, I faced this question last night. God asked me, do you go soul winning because you have to? Do you go soul winning because you care? See, there's a lot of things we do because we have to. But do we do it because we care? Do you worry that somebody's going to sp spend eternity in hell? Dear sinner, are you worried today that you'd have to spend eternity in hell? Maybe you know I've not mingled it with faith. Are you not the least bit scared that hell would be your home? You understand me? When I was a little boy... I remember when I came to the realization that hell was my home. That I was bound for a devil's hell. It scared me to death. Scared the soul out of me almost. Amen. I about died right there. Scared me. You know why? Because I knew one day the devil's going to welcome me with open arms. I'm going to burn forever. And I thought, dear God, Please don't let me do that. I beg Jesus to save my soul. You ever been there? You realize you're bound for a devil's hell? Well, let me tell you, this scare the daylights out of you. And if it doesn't, something's wrong with you. If a devil's hell don't scare you, something's wrong with you. It scared me to death. But then it should scare us as Christians. It should scare you to think, they're going to go there. Boy, I'm saved, praise God, but what about them? Well, you're saved, praise God, but what about your family? I'm scared to death for my little girl because she's not saved. Now, as a baby, we know, the Bible talks about, they don't know. Babies die and go to heaven. But when she comes to that age where she knows, I'm begging God, He'll save her. I'm begging God at an early age, she'll trust Jesus as her Savior. It scares me to death. I said, dear God, I prayed for my family first. When's the last time you prayed for your family? Listen, Christian, when's the last time you begged God on your knees to save your family? When's the last time you begged God and said, dear God, I can't go see them. I can't witness to them. They're all the way across the ocean. They're all the way across the country. They're, they're even next door to me. But God, you've got to work on their hearts. Dear God, save them. When's the last time you prayed for your family? When's the last time you prayed for your friends? Some of you have friends you know are going to die and go to hell. When's the last time you prayed for them? 
When's the last time you begged God to soften their hearts? Well, you listen to me. A lot of people are going to die and go to hell because a Christian did not fear. Let us therefore fear. You didn't fear. Hell doesn't scare you enough to tell somebody about Jesus. Hell doesn't scare you enough to tell your boss when you have time. Hell doesn't scare you enough to tell your friend when you have time. Hell doesn't scare you enough to tell your family when you have time. And hell doesn't scare you enough to get saved when you have time. Some of you know you're not saved. Listen to me, I can look and some of you know. I don't know who you are. God knows. But some of you know in this room you're not born again. It ought to scare you to death. It ought to scare you so much that you'd, you'd come to this old-fashioned altar and let me show you how you could be saved. It ought to scare you so much that you'd go home and beg your mom or dad, show me how to be saved. The problem is, in America, we've got so used to watching all these movies. We've got used to watching all this junk. And our minds are filled with everything else. We don't even realize what's real. We don't even know reality anymore. You listen to me. Nothing's more important in this service right now than for you to listen to the Word of God. We've got to be careful. We've got to fear. God burdened my heart last night, and I'll be done. I won't take up all... I, won't, I, have, I promised God I would, I would not take up all that time. But listen to me, I was praying last night. And God changed my heart and said, you know what? Do you care? Do you fear? Some of us don't fear today. Do you care about souls? Do you care about your soul? If you died, would you spend eternity in heaven? Oh God, help us. Get saved today if you're not saved. Let me tell you, I was scared to death last night. I said, God, don't let it be because I did not give the gospel that somebody didn't get saved that came to this church. Don't let it be that somebody sat in this auditorium and heard the gospel and did not mingle it with faith. But dear Christian, don't let it be that somebody went to, the gospel, or somebody went to hell because they didn't hear about it from you. You have a personal responsibility. A personal responsibility to tell somebody else. I'll stop every other program this church has. We'll stop every other fellowship if we have to, till we get a mind to be soul winners. You know why? Because nothing else is going to get people and save them from an eternal hell. Nobody's going to go to hell because of birth, or nobody's going to go to heaven because of birthday cake. Now I love it, love it to death. <laughs> I have problems with birthday cake. But I'd rather us go soul winning. Now I'm all for having time for everything. But I'll say this, if, a ch if our church ever gets to where we prioritize more a birthday and anniversary fellowship than we do giving the gospel, we'll stop having a birthday and anniversary fellowship. You know why? People are dying and going to hell. Do you understand that? Listen to me today. I don't think you understand. Do you understand people are dying and going to hell today? Listen, do you understand these things here, they don't matter? You understand this table here does not matter? It's going to be gone one day. You understand this, these things here are going to leave? They're going to be gone? Listen. I'll clean those up, Miss Miranda. She comes and cleans, God bless her. You realize these things are going to be gone one day, but people are going to die and burn in hell. You understand me? One day, this altar will be gone. You'll never have another chance to get saved. Maybe you're not saved today. You'll never have another chance. You know how you can tell if you're not saved? Pride. I don't need Jesus. I don't need that. I'll be fine on my own. You know how you can tell if you, don't want, if you don't care about souls? Pride. 
you say, somebody else will tell them. I don't have to go. I don't have time to go. Dear Christian, please, I'm begging you with me. I begged God last night. I'm begging you, please. I got on my knees before God. I'll get on my knees before you and beg you. People are dying and burning in hell in Wichita. You understand that? A million people. Somebody dies every 12 seconds. They're burning in hell. I beg you, be a soul winner. I'm not talking about just on Saturdays. I'm talking about every day when you have a chance. When God gives you an opportunity, tell somebody about Jesus. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear God in heaven, Lord, you have really moved on me last night. God, I'm not the soul winner that I should be, and I don't even care about souls like I should. I don't have that fear of God like I should. God, would you help us? Help us to fear, to be soul winners. Holy Spirit, if anybody's in the room, I beg you, God, that they'd get saved if they don't know. Holy Spirit, would you move upon the hearts? Lord Jesus, don't let anybody die and burn in hell. I don't want it to be done. I'm going to do my best. I love these people, dear God. I don't ever want it to be said that they had to burn in hell because of a pastor that, does, that wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Heads bowed, nice closed. Anybody like that today? You'd say, Pastor, you know what? You were preaching, and I realized I've heard the gospel many times before, but I've never mingled it with faith. And I need to be saved. I won't call you out. I won't, I won't embarrass you. But I'd like you to come forward here in a moment at the invitation so I can show you how you can go to heaven. Anybody like that today? You say, Pastor. Anybody else? You'd say, Pastor, I know I've not mingled it with faith. I've heard the gospel many times. I've heard it over and over and over, but I've never put my faith in Jesus to save me. Anybody else like that? You'd raise your hand. Anybody else? Young man, have a seat, please. Have a seat for me, please. Thank you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Anybody else? Most serious time ever. All right. Dear Christian, let's get busy about winning souls. Let's get busy about loving people. Boy, God pushed my heart this last week. I'm more concerned with a lot of things, and I wasn't concerned with souls. I was going to go home last night and take it easy. God burdened my heart. Has God burdened yours? Do you care? Let's be burdened. Let's take those tracks back there and let's give people the gospel. Heads bowed, eyes closed. We'll all stand. The invitation's open. You need to come forward. Do